whatever. Today's video, we start with a hydration chart. Am I hydrated? Aim for clear urine at least 10 times a day. Eat a diet rich in fresh fruits and vegetables. Drink a quart of water before meals. Thank you. In this video, we're gonna talk about bike touring. All right, some bike touring. What do you, so what sort of bike touring gonna to do? All right, what sort of bike touring gonna to use? It's, it's a, a big question, you're gonna go dirt, you're gonna go road. Let's go with dirt first, put the road bike down. We're gonna go with dirt. We're gonna put our helmet on, and we're gonna be going riding some dirt. Right. So a bike like this, I wouldn't recommend for touring. I'll tell you why. You know, it's, a, it's a very high quality bike. It's a Chinese carbon S-Works, genuine S-Works, they're made in China, assembled in Taiwan. So it's a Chinese carbon bike, about $12,500 Aussie retail. A few issues with it though. In my experience, the proprietary parts, I mean, if you're out in the trail and something fucks up, this is on my, I think my fifth shock now. Specialized credits them been very good. They just keep giving me shocks, keep sending them back. There's a bit of a tennis there, they're very friendly, but nothing's changed. Um, so I would recommend hardtail. I recommend hardtail. Brakes as well. These are hydro, the best money can buy, but the right one's a bit, you know, the front one's a little bit iffy. So again, if you want total durability, go with cable discs. If you're touring, because you might be at the back of back of you know Australia in the outback and not have any service out there so if you've got cables you can do stuff yourself electronic gearing i wouldn't recommend either now, i know someone did power express paris this year and their dura ace di2 just cooked out you know and they didn't finish the power express paris they traveled from australia all the way to uh, to france and the di2 cooked 600 k's or 500 k's in so i wouldn't recommend that so we're going to talk about dirt i don't recommend di2 i don't recommend dual suspension i uh, hydraulic discs, yeah, hit and miss, hit and miss, because something happens in the trail, you have a crash or whatever, your line gone, the CLA, you ain't got one break for the rest of the trip. So, <laughs> think about that when you go out touring. What, how do always focus on durability. Durability number one, two, weight. Always go lightweight, light as possible, but durable. Helmet, you want a, a durable helmet. Sleeping bag, you want lightweight, but also warm enough. Clothing, lightweight but warm enough. You, there's nothing worse than being on tour. It can also be dangerous as well. Big storm comes in, you run out of food, you hurt your leg, you can't ride, you miss the shop, you got no food and you're cold as heck. So having a good sleeping bag, good warm clothing is really essential. So always have warmth, warmth, all right? So durability, lightweight, warmth. You know, things like that's really important. I'll tell you why, that's, you know, good quality sleep, getting that deep sleep at night time when you're touring, that can make or break your trip. Good sleep helps with glycogen retention, hydration, all these things. And if you're not getting those, then your tour is, you, you might be able to finish your tour, but you probably never want to do it again. You're like, yeah, I finished that, but hey, fuck bike touring, that sucks, that sucks. So I've done many bike tours, I've cycled across Australia, from Adelaide to Melbourne, uh, from Perth to Melbourne actually, right across Australia. And then up from Adelaide all the way to Tipper Cape York, solo, unsupported, all vegan. And so I know exactly what it takes to ride across Australia. I've done from Seattle to Los Angeles, uh, Singapore up to Laos, uh, Vietnam, up in Laos there. Actually, in Mae Say in northern Thailand and uh, in Burma as well. So, you know, it's uh, I've, done some, I've done some travels and learned a lot on the way. And so I'm age 42 now, I can give you some fantastic advice. But uh, always wear your helmet is one, because I have seen people die from no helmet. So helmet's the real deal, like in Thailand especially, you'd be out, say, oh, I don't need a helmet, it's all good, Instagram looking cool, and then bang, I've seen, you know, I think three dead people in Thailand recently, no helmet, so helmet won't put make you invincible, but it definitely makes a big difference. So bikes, I would recommend a hard tail, suspension on the front, optional, I'd definitely recommend 29er wheels, definitely 29er, why? They roll over things, they keep their speed better, they're more comfortable, 29 for the win, 100%. I've cycled across Australia on my old S-Works Epic back in 2006. Uh, cycled across Australia and uh, December 2006 on my 26th Epic S-Works. <laughs> and that was Nobly's and that was epic. Epic. 
but uh, I'll definitely recommend 29er. I, I can't ride 26 anymore. First world problem, but 29er for the win, 27, nah, 29er for the win. All right, that's the mountain bike done, hard tail, cable disc, non-DI2 for durability, 29er. All right, now we're gonna talk about the road bike. So we're gonna do some road touring. This is a great bike, giant defy, good geometry, a bit more upright, you know, not as slammed, not as aero. If you do have a road bike, you just always flip your stem, that'll increase your stack height, so you're a bit more upright, which is better on your back and neck, you know, for 10 or 12 hours a day. Uh, the giant defy, like the geometry, a bit more upright. This bike, would have ride across Australia on this bike, you could, but I probably wouldn't risk it. The zip hub at the back with broken, how many spokes, Natasha? Is it four or something? About four spokes at the back of that wheel's wobbly wobbly. So the, the wheels aren't durable. It's got DI2, which is like great around town, but if it fucks up and you're at the bush, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bring it on a, on a trip. I wouldn't bring it on a trip at all. Uh, it's got hydro discs, which is great around town, but you can see the, this one here is failing. So, yeah. You know, hit and miss, and it's been serviced by a few good shops, so I think it's just a, a warranty claim with Shimano, but because it's past its warranty expiration date, it's going to landfill, unfortunately. So that's why I don't really rate the DI2. I wouldn't buy it ever again, because it, it's landfill product, really. You know, it's gonna die eventually, and then it's like, Shimano Australia, ah, uh, yeah, how's your day? So, oh, you know, it feels so good though, I love DI2. It, it feels great, but when it's gone, it's, so it's crisp. Gone. Yeah, so around, t around home it's good. This, this is for this is for touring. True. This is for traveling. But from an environmental standpoint, I think you can't really go past SRAM Mechanical. It's bang, 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 crisp, crisp, crisp. Did you, what did you think of the SRAM Mechanical on that Merida bike? Yeah, it, it's yeah, great it's, too. It's as close as you can get to DI2 feel with the durability and the resourcefulness, the minimum weight. So a road bike's fantastic. Uh, also, this is, you know, if you do crack a seat post on one of these bikes, it's an issue if you've got a standard seat post 27.2 great my biggest one of the biggest tips as well of touring with product is don't go for proprietary parts what does proprietary mean proprietary means this if this breaks in a crash or a bike falls over or a kangaroo hits you and you crack it that's game over if you've got a 27.2 seat post a standard post most places can you can get one of those from even in the bush you get someone to send it to you so proprietary otherwise everything else is pretty standard Gearing, always go easier, all right? You're gonna be going slow, you're gonna be tired, you're gonna, have, you're gonna be carrying equipment, going up hills. We've got a, a 50-34 in here, but I'd recommend like a 46-30, and the 32 at the back are even bigger, all right? You, there's nothing worse. I mean, I've cycled the Pyrenees and the Alps twice with a 53-39 up the front and a 21 on the back. No. <laughs> with a 10 kilo backpack or about yeah, five kilos of luggage and stuff like that. RIP knees. RIP knees indeed. That was when I was like, you know, 25, 23 and 26 and stuff like that. So I was just super gung-ho and I did it and I could do it today. I could smash it. So I'm way fitter at age 42 than I was 26 because I know how to eat, think and sleep better. And uh, but yeah, just bad gearing choices. Bad gearing choices, you know? It, it wasn't enjoyable. It was like every climb was like, oh fuck. It's just like, eh, eh, eh. And it's, it's hardcore, you know. Because then you make a wrong turn, you gotta go back down the end of the climb, climb back out the other valley. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. It's just like, yeah, it's a wonder I've still got knee cartilage left. <laughs> All right, so the product these days makes it a lot easier. So this bike would be better if we had a normal seat post, get rid of the DI2, get rid of the disc brakes, or use cable disc brakes, and it's gonna be a great touring rig. Fant giant mate, great quality carbon, I'm a big fan. It's made in Taiwan. Quality is really good. I do like it. Yeah. The bike still feels stiff. It's fantastic. Giant, you did good. Proprietary parts, so I'm not a fan. Anyway, that's just some touring tips uh, in terms of, terms of uh, product choice. Mountain bike versus road. This is the best information out there. It's very pragmatic. It's very real world. It's unsponsored. It's non-biased, and it's coming from a personal place where I want to help people enjoy their trip out there. Because bike touring, I'll be honest with you. It's life changing. Everybody should do a bike trip, solo especially, or with a friend, an expert or a guide or whatever, just to get that feel. It's camping in nature, close to the land, it's really awesome. You understand how your body works. And as a, a, as a nutrition geek, as a personal trainer since 1996, bicycle touring has taught me everything I need to know about nutrition. Because it's taught me what's, what's shit and what's legit. 
this keto nonsense. It's like, go and do a bike tour on that. Go and try and manage your family or business on that. Yeah, right. But bike touring, high carb, dealing with stuff, it's going to be a lot easier. Anyway, if you want more information, go to drewandrod.com. Got a fantastic ebook there full of tips. It's called Drew and Rod's Lean Body Bible. It's all about cycling, products, etc. Any questions, hit up down below. We'll see you on the road. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, hit the thumbs down. If you want more, subscribe. If you had enough of my voice, unsubscribe. See you on the road.